All right. Hello, everyone. Hello, how are you? Let's see, I'm going to turn my volume up here. There we go. And should be sharing the agenda notes. I want to make sure that everyone has that link handy. So, of course. There we go. Okay, let me share again. All right. In case anyone is missing or doesn't have the link handy for the agenda notes, um, just drop that link in Zoom chat. Looks like we have this week's template started. Thank you for um, getting that started. If everyone can go ahead and pull up the agenda and log attendance, we'd greatly appreciate everyone's participation in that. And just to make sure, can anyone hear me? Yes, we are. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Um, of course, this is a great time to add anything to the agenda that is in importance to any of you. Um, this is an open public meeting, so anyone is welcome to um, make sure that they're part of the um, community Google group, and that should give you access to write on the notes so you can add agenda items or PRs um, bugs or anything else that's spe of special interest to you that we go ahead and cover today. It looks like we have a pretty light agenda. Um, by chance, do we have anyone on the call who would like to introduce themselves? Maybe they're new to the call or um, have just been um, lurking in previous calls, we'd love a chance to welcome you and say hello. Uh, yeah, I, I have joined. Hey, hello, everyone. My name is Vivek. I have joined uh, some calls previously as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty new to the community, I would say. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just a software developer, I would say, uh, that work around Kubernetes and other related technologies. Uh, recently, we have done some work that involves uh, QBert, and that is the reason I'm just uh, trying to join these these meetings uh, to know more about about the things. So, yeah, if you have uh, if you have something to talk about, if you want to reach out to me, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I have I have uh, added my GitHub handle in my name as well. Um, awesome. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. It's good to have you, Vivek. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah. Um, let me see. Actually, there's something I want to add. I need to look it up real quick.
There it is. Okay. All right, just wanted to call out real quick, of course, that the um, all of the submitters for the Kubert Summit should have uh, received um, either um, acceptance or otherwise um, notice that uh, their talks weren't accepted this year. Um, of course, thank you to everyone who submitted um it was my first time uh, on a, the review panel i was extremely pleasantly surprised that um we were um we were really pushed to try and include so many more than we could um but the the submissions were excellent and um it was it was definitely difficult to try and um, eliminate any of them. So thank you all to everyone who submitted. And um, of course, the dates are March 29th to 30th. Be sure and add that to your calendars. Um, There's some really fantastic sessions coming up. And um, I don't know when we're going to publish the public schedule or if that's already done. Andrew Burden is out, I believe, right now. So um, we'll be sure and get that all shared out uh, as soon as that is available. So you can mark the ones that are of interest to you on your calendar. OK, let's see. Thank you. It looks like we have an item on open floor. I have someone who wants to speak to that. Yes. Hey, um, sorry, I was just populating the text for it. Uh, um, <clears throat> so um, we were upgrading um, Cubeboard from a relatively older version that is 0 0.35 to 0 0.50. Um, and one of the things that um, happened was that um, the metadata fields in um, cloud in it. Um, so there are, there are two ways. Um, in which you can um, use cloud in it, um, no metadata and um, cl uh, config drive metadata. So the config drive metadata fields changed from um, using hyphenated delim delimiters to um, snake case that is underscore delimiters. Um, if you open the issue, there is um, the, the change link um, points to the exact change. Um, Thank you. You have a line specifically that you want to show? Yes. Um, I believe it's um, if you just scroll um, half a page down. It should be line 91. Of uh, which file? Yeah, sorry. Give me one second. Uh, Cloudinit.go. Uh, line 83. Yeah, 
So if you look at the JSON tag, uh, those um, changed um, and um, the older tags were are on the left, um, line 70. So what happened in our case is that tenants used to have hyphenated um, fields um, as their VMI data. And because of this upgrade, um, their um, instances were not coming up. Um, it expected the, the uh, um, hyphenated fields, but it was um, the, the cube word code base was looking for the uh, underscore delimited fields and it turned out to be blank. So th this is the core issue. What I, I mean, I wanted to know if anyone would have um, uh, opinions about whether or not we should consider this issue um, and solve for it. One of the ways we could solve it is add an optional legacy instance type field, which would have the older, um, older, API, um, hyphenated API. Um, and that really does not break anything. It would not be a huge burden to carry forward um, that, that fix. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, get community's thoughts on whether um, we should go for this or not. So I, I, I'm not sure that we, we even have a upgrade path between so from 35 to 50 sounds like like too much. Um, so I'm not yeah. sure that anyone even uh, considered it. I can tell you from uh, our downstreams that are using Google don't have such a thing. Like, it's usually they are very close and it's well tested and but we will probably never have a matrix that tests such such upgrade the question is if you upgrade in uh, in small steps do you have the same problem or not oh uh, well no this was version specific so the the exact version which this api change was introduced was in 0 0.36 um we got unlucky and just got um, hit by it. Um, I don't believe if anyone upgrades from, let's say 0 0.45 to 0 0.46, they will hit this issue because if they are using 0 0.45 version, it's already the new fields uh, in the API. And maybe even then we didn't have any upgrade path as well. I mean, we have an upgrade test at the moment. Maybe at that time we didn't even have that. Uh, so is this even relevant to the current version? Anybody who upgrades from an older version than 0 0.35, it is relevant? Yes. Yeah. Mm, the the one, the comment in the chat, um, I agree. So anyone who upgrades from 3.5 to beyond 3.5, this is relevant. And really like this is one instance of the upgrade path um, that I, I understand our um, version skew was large but this brings up a second larger conversation is that what would be an acceptable upgrade paths that um, that we would ideally like to support um, and um, 
it, that that is a larger discussion and I, I wanted to kind of root out that discussion with this example. Hey, <clears throat> so I think this is breaking change in API in the 45 to 36, as we mentioned. I think it's acceptable if you open a backdoor to 36 up to probably latest, uh, but we can discuss that. And from what we want to support, we always want to support only N minus one version. So I think that's Sorry. going to stay for now if we don't agree on anything else. Okay, makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I think N minus, is that um, uh, a number that have that has come out of discussion or it's that number we have already implicitly assumed um, in, in, in discussions in the community? Well, I'm not sure if, we, if it was written down somewhere or said, but we technically support or test only this, uh, this upgrade. Got it. And um, do you think um, I should open another issue that um, at least documents it somewhere for users? Definitely. Um, if we have, if we have yeah. not written it down, I would do so. Okay. But from All my right. yeah, from my personal experience, I can tell you that we are compatible with more versions than and minus one, but. It's tricky to to get you right. Yeah, I I'm not, but I'm I'm just not sure. I mean, I think that you can raise it, but uh, but I'm actually not really sure that we can even do this. Uh, in in uh, in in practical sense, we are not supporting this version for sure. It's like it's like so long ago that. Uh, no one is looking that far, and even backporting to there, it's like sounds uh, sounds like an exception to me. So it needs to be it's not not yeah. a normal so uh, normal thing to do here. But I don't you you also assume that the CI will still work on all kind of things on this old version. I'm not that sure that it will. So, so the change we are talking about is very um, safe, right? We are just adding an extra optional field. If those fields don't exist, nobody will be hurt by by that chain, right? So, I'm I'm not sure if the concerns are valid, or or maybe we can come up with something where uh, we don't have to backport it all the way up to version uh, 35. Um, we can come up with that. Uh, okay, from 35, we only support, let's say, 50 or, or 55 or whatever number, and only backport till then, until which the CI allows. So, so at least we have an upgrade path from 35 to some later version, which, which is acceptable. Um, and then from there on, uh, users can take the upgrades for. Well. I think that if you add the code now for backward for in order to support backward compatibility before 35 on on main, that is like a very large burden on on the code base. It's like no, I I so, so let me uh, let me raise the PR and you can comment on the burden because so first thing this is an API change, right? So API change we have been supporting um, backward compatibility since um, since long time. Like we don't try to break API um, yeah, across version. Yeah, all right, but yeah. yeah, and and so fixing this is is not going to be as burden burdensome as um, as it can appear to be in, in the first like first pass. Um, it's just some extra additional, like two, three lines of fields that you have to add here. Yeah, but that's the the problem is that these fields are not used ever. It's only there for like uh, like stale stale fields in order to allow upgrades from version that we don't even remember they existed. So, but uh, let let me give you a, a, another option. I don't know if I mean, 
anyway you could suggest it anyway it's uh, just just a personal opinion my my suggestion is that because this is so so old what what can be done is to create a, a special version maybe to branch it to a special branch and only that version will support this uh, so you could so if someone wants to upgrade from from something before so old they must go through this uh, special version if they encounter this problem and then only then they can continue on with the upgrade part. So that one will not will not cause problem. I mean, we don't need to add anything to the to the future and don't need to touch the existing uh, code. But for for these uh, exceptions for very old uh, version that are still running today, we could give this uh, workaround. I don't know if it's like for me it sounds much uh, easier to to have it, but but still it's another option. Um, I think that option will cause more problems in the future, right? Because how long will you keep maintaining that branch? Would we have uh, CI testing things across that branch? Um, no, no. So when we, yeah. You, we will when not we, maintain this branch. I'm sorry? We will, I, what I'm suggesting is that we don't maintain anything there. We just create, for example, you take uh, the branch that was 036, you you we release another build there like it's a very special build like a hotfix and there uh, that version uh, that specific version will solve this specific problem for very very old uh, users so they will have to upgrade to that one and from there they will have to go or continue on but we will not we will not go maintain it we will just we could just release it as a hotfix or something like that that's that's so why that, I said. that solves my problem right like it solves like i can go as a user i can go currently from 3.5 to that version hotfix version and from hotfix to um the next version although what i'm suggesting what i'm the discussion we are having is not just specific to me anyone who upgrades from 35 um, will hit this issue and um, the 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 question i have in that workflow is for how long will we keep telling users that if you want to upgrade to older version than 35 go to this hotfix branch branch do we have a way to test it or do we have the cycles to to look at that branch i no, i no. would rather prefer to um, you know if the code changes are not um, huge and it is not burden, burdensome, which I think um, it will not be. I, I would think this would be a good example we set for, for the things, API changing, API breaking things that have been recognized and we as a community keep uh, keep up having in the code base so that upgrades don't break for users. I, I in my opinion, it will be a good good example. Yeah, I, I think the problem with going in that direction, though, is you're then re-breaking the API forward-facing because you're now introducing new fields that people will potentially come to rely on in that legacy slot. Um, if you go through and you follow this path for upgrading, it provides a means for them to get to where they should be. I'm not suggesting that it was right to break the API in the first thing, right? That's That's kind of the cardinal rule, but by introducing additional fields and they remain there for the future which could potentially cause additional problems as well so, so you have to be careful which direction you... you go with that because if you add more fields and people start using those fields instead of you know using the correct field now you have other people who could potentially be broken in the future if we decide to remove the legacy field so you just break it further you just push the problem forward um, I agree with that, but we we I think we have a policy of not deprecating um, fields, right? No, so, the, this is this is not true. By the way, we are we don't at the moment we don't have such. A, I mean, we are breaking APIs from time to time. This is something that we do. We are trying not to do it, but uh, at the current state, we do have this. We do sometimes do it, but it's yeah. very rare. I think. It depends on on how the you know the version releases are are, are managed. Uh, you know, 
if it's semantic versioning versus you know some other versioning it's up to the you know the overall maintainers of the project to to make that decision um and to to enforce it how they see fit but if you if we never broke apis at a an acceptable stage and we'd never make progress so i i think we when we have reached um, v1 um like the v1 apis we try to not break them at least ideally as a principle and then if things like this happen where it it is unintentional um you know nobody can go around that but at least in practice um my understanding was that api fields that have hit v1 don't um they should not be broken yeah that's and, that's general practice but again it just depends on you know on, on what what the versioning people decide uh, it, again i i <clears throat> i don't have any authority to speak on that but i agree usually it 1.0 it's a major release and from then you wouldn't break that right but so yeah. one one thing to notice in all of this is um while it is friendly to uh of course try and support um larger jumps in the uh, the upgrade cycle um technically the kubevert update policy is to only uh support updating one release at a time and that's the way that the the testing, of course, will be done, which means jumping from a 3.0 release to a 5x release is going to be um, well beyond the the tested up, update path of uh, of the um, supported, you know, journey. So um, I yeah. think at this point, I can understand how it might be nice to prevent um something like this if it, it, it's reasonable and possible um and if it affects a very large number of people within especially within the um the uh, approved the supported upgrade path but this since this is so far outside of the updated support path um i'm going to suggest it's probably pedantic um beyond what is productive to break developer cycles from and and jump to. Um, I I agree with that. Um, I just just wanted to bring this up for discussion because uh, if in the future we will come up with like if there are API breaking changes, can we have some kind of um, written down or agreed upon rules where? the community or the users are aware that this is how um, it should uh, work. Um, so I, I think the, while this is a really, like this is a large version skew in terms of breakage, um, I'm trying to just have a more forward looking conversation where we set down some kind of um, examples for this. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and also drop the release notes hyperlink here. Um, I, I haven't quickly identified where which version has this change. It should be relatively easy to go back to um, GitHub to see when that was merged and then what release came after that. And then identify if we have it correctly noted in the Kubert releases. It might be an obscure um, release note so it may be that we could improve um the release note message i do not know i would have to identify that and if that's the case it's completely fair to 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 point that out um i, I would not disagree that way you can at least hone in on which release addresses this issue so that you can you know make sure to follow that entire journey um but uh for the sake of time, I am going to go ahead and move the meeting on to um, going through PRs, uh, any mailing list and bug scrub items here. I did okay, not get no problem. That Thank you. Ahead of time. Sure thing. Thank you. All right. Let's see. It is the 22nd and, of course, our last 
was the 15th. So let's see what we got here. Looks like we could use a volunteer for six storage. anyone has suggestions on either of those recommended let's see what we got we'll jump over to PRs Looks like we're good on PRs. We'll go through issues real quick. Of course, if anyone has any that they specifically want us to look at, be sure and add them to the agenda and I'll just pull those up directly. Let's see. Is the one we were just covering. I'm on screen. Okay, let's see.
seems like information, but Masquerade should come up pretty clean. Is there a version of Kubernetes on or a version of Nope. Okay, I'm gonna follow up with questions on that. This one sounds like it would be a good candidate for SIG storage community to me. Um, Kate, I think you presenting the wrong tab, maybe, because we see the tab with the test Oh, what? Um, oh, it says sharing is paused. Uh -huh. There we go. All right. Yeah, so thanks. That's better. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so apologies for the dead air there. Um, hot plug volume, kill pod, uh, more time, lead iSCSI re-login. That is a little bit of a mouthful. But basically, it looks like the um, hot plug volume for a nice SCSI PVC is not recovering after two exits. Ah, looks like the PR is getting movement, so it's not idle. Okay, cool. Ignore that then. And it looks like we are back to last week. Okay. All right. In that case, it looks like double checking. We've covered everything on the agenda. And in that case, I'm going to go ahead and move to close the meeting unless there are any last items, fallouts, anything like that. Going once, going twice. All right. Thank you all for attending this week's Kubert Community Meeting. Um, as always, we'll see you same time, same place next week. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye.